Hey guys, in this lecture we'll create this awesome shiny 3D text layer. In this 10 to 15 minute process of designing it, we'll use a variety of layer styles, but we'll convert our text to a smart object so we can keep it editable. This way you can replace it with any other word or phrase without ruining the effect. Start with a new project that's 1000 by 500 pixels. Get the type tool and write anything you want. I'll stick to my original plan, so I'll go with shiny 3D. This should be written in mollet at 200 pixels. For the moment, I'll make it white. I'll also change my background to black so you can see what's going on. This is a font that you can download from dafont.com. There's a link included in the attachments in case you haven't added it to your library of fonts so far. Center it on the canvas and let's convert it to a smart object. Now comes the fun part, all our layer styles. Start with a gradient overlay and set it to multiply. Check dither because that prevents a phenomenon called banding where your gradient isn't smooth. Set it to linear at 90 degrees. Oh, I forgot the opacity. That should be maxed at 100%. For the actual gradient, we'll need three colors. Start with the default one and we'll edit it like so. Select the first bottom handle and use this code, 00FFCC. This should be left as is. For the second colour code, you can click anywhere near the middle. Here's my value, B41FFF. This has to be positioned at the 50% mark. I suggest you use your mouse scroll with your shift key to move in 10 pixel increments. Click on the last one to set the final handle. Its colour code is FE83FF. This should be positioned at 65%. These striking colours are really going to pop once we get some more effects going. Currently, there's not a lot going on, but we just got started. In case you're wondering, we need to set it to multiply as the blending mode because we'll want to add a pattern overlay in just a moment. Hit OK and we can change the background back to white. OK, pretty good. Next, we'll add an inner shadow. Keep it at pure black and set its opacity to 45%. For the blend mode, go with multiply. Now for these settings, go with 15, 15, 10. These are all values I ended up with after using a lot of trial and error. I'll spare you all those details because it's really boring stuff. For the contour, I need something interesting, so I'll click on this area and that'll open up this contour editor. From the drop down, choose half round. This immediately changes the inner shadow. My advice regarding those presets, use them randomly and see how they affect your layer style. After a certain point, you'll start to predict their outcome. It's very similar to our blending modes. Anyway, let's move to Pattern Overlay. Before we get into its settings, let's click here to open up our gallery. Now I'll reset it by using this gear icon. I want the default one. If you don't want to lose all your patterns, just hit Append when you get this notice. From this list, I'll go with this diagonal line. Great, now set it at Normal with its opacity on Max. From the Scale slider, turn it down to 80% so we can have more lines in our design. Now let's add a drop shadow. Nothing special here, multiply with pure black as our colour. The opacity should be fairly low, around 30% or so. Keep it at 90 degrees without global light. For these sliders, go with 5, 0, 10. Remember to always go for barely visible drop shadows, as anything that's too noticeable will be perceived as a lack of finesse. Great progress so far. I know it doesn't look like much, but we'll soon ramp it up. Let's close this window and create a copy of this smart object. Clear all our styles because we'll need new ones. Drop the fill to 0%. The goal here is to use it to create a very chiseled look. Let's start with a stroke. This should be placed on the inside of our layer. For the size, I'll go with something fairly generous, 8 pixels. I'll stick with black as my colour, but I'll turn down my opacity to 40%. This is not going to be enough, so I'll click on this symbol to get another stroke. This time it will be a very vibrant teal. 1B, F2, FF. Leave it on the inside, but drop the size to 5 pixels. Review all the settings and make sure it's starting to catch here. I think this needs to be increased back to 100%. Yeah, this is much improved. Next, we'll add a bevel and emboss. Here we have a lot of settings, so let's take it section by section. First, set the style to Stroke Emboss. For the technique, choose Chisel Hard. 
keep the depth at 100% with a size of 5 pixels. We want it fairly soft, so use 5 here as well. For the shading, keep it at 90 degrees, but with a very low altitude. 5 will work fine. The contour that works best in this case is the second one. The highlight mode can be left at screen with 100% opacity. In most cases, I leave it at pure white because that's how you get this nice effect at the top of our letters. If you take it down to 0%, you can see it makes a pretty big difference. For the shadow, change the blend mode to linear burn in case you have it set to anything else. For the colour, I'll go with 125173 with the opacity set at 40%. Well, we've made good progress, but we're not there yet. Let's add a gradient overlay, and it's the same one from the gold text effect. In case you don't have it already loaded in your library, it's attached to this lecture too. This needs to be set at 40% opacity and a 125 degree angle. Check the reverse option. For the blend mode, normal will work just fine. This will give us some fantastic reflections on our text. OK, we're done with our second smart object. Now we have to take care of some extra details that will further enhance this effect. Duplicate this top layer and place it underneath these two. Clear its layer styles, and here's what we'll add instead. First, a drop shadow with the following settings. Pure black, with the opacity set at 25%. Multiply is fine as the blending mode. Leave it at 90 degrees with a distance of 10 pixels. For the spread, 10% is going to be fine. As for the size, go with 8 pixels. In case you haven't done so already, pause the video and take a moment to input all of these settings by yourself. I know it's easy to copy-paste them from the attached PSD, but it's not the same experience. Finally, I'll add a bevel and emboss where the style will be set to emboss. Leave the technique at chisel hard, but change the depth to 135%. We're looking for a size of 10 pixels, no softening whatsoever. For the shading, I've ended up using a 130 degree angle with a 25 degree altitude. For the contour, open up the gallery and choose half round. I don't want any highlights, but we'll need a strong shadow. Crank it up to 100% and set the blending mode to multiply. For the color code, go with 21236C. This is a nice shade of blue that will create our 3D look. And there you go, this is much better. In case you want to accentuate its weight even further, add another drop shadow. This is going to be set to black, 20% opacity. For the distance, go with 20 pixels and change the size value to 15. This is an optional step, but I think it adds to it. And that's your shiny 3D text layer. A lot of techniques were involved in this creation process. Let me know how you did in the comments section.